Brandon, Mr. Rowan, I haven't, I seen, it. I I haven't seen it. Man. I'm going to say this. I haven't seen an Olympia this competitive since, like, 2013. All right, what's going on you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple more interesting stories for you guys today. Another video because there's so much going on. The first story I've got for you guys today, a really interesting live stream just a couple hours ago between Phil Heath and Big Rami. It went on for a pretty decent amount of time, probably an hour or over an hour. And one of the more interesting things that was said during the course of that live stream, among many different interesting topics, was Big Rami told Phil what his stage weight was going to be, the weight that they're shooting for is apparently 295 pounds, which honestly, this sounds crazy, but that's a little low for Rami compared to how much he's weighed on stage in the past, or at least how much they've claimed he's weighed on stage in the past. And they talked about the importance of conditioning, which I think is a very, very good sign from Rami. And also, I think you consider the fact that not only does he look really conditioned and has he looked very conditioned in all the updates that we've seen from him leading up to the show, but he still looks bigger and fuller than ever. So I don't think, you know, we've talked about this before when it pertains to a guy like Samson Dowda. How much does actual stage weight really matter? And this is something that Big Rami and Phil talked about. And Phil actually said, and I thought this was interesting too, his heaviest weight on stage, Phil's, was 248 pounds. Which is not really that big compared to some of the guys that we see competing in the Olympia this year in the mid-260s, 270s, 280s, and Rami at 295. And it gives you a little bit more perspective too. the fact that Brandon just said he was weighing 265 pounds relative to Phil's heaviest weight being 248 is pretty significant. So Rami did kind of reveal that the game plan that he has is conditioning this year and 295 being the weight that they're shooting for on stage, I think is uh, admirable because in the past, the strategy with Rami seemed really to be during the buildup for the show um, to kind of just hype up this crazy body weight that he had. And it seems like that's not the strategy they're going with this year. And they're, they're, they're looking at a much more refined version of Rami. And that's another discussion that him and Phil had was how important it is to actually refine your physique at that weight and not just come in at that weight. It's one thing to say, Hey, I weigh 300 pounds on stage. I'm a 300 pound bodybuilder, but you got to actually refine that 300 pound physique and come in at your best at 300 pounds. There's a difference. So the 295 thing, I think, was the most important revelation of that live stream. And it was cool just to see him interacting, Rami and Phil interacting. And also you can tell that Rami's face um, is absolutely sunken in, total total death face there. And also um, on Dennis James's podcast last night, Dennis showed another brief, uh, I guess, screenshot of one of Rami's posing sessions. And again, I think it's newsworthy because it's Rami. And it's also newsworthy because Rami has kind of stopped posting updates at this point. But again... It is a screenshot of a screen grab from a webcam video. So it's not going to be the highest quality. So you can't really see much. Rami's hitting a most muscular there. And again, I mean, all you can really glean from this is the fact that Rami still looks big. And we know that he's shooting for 295. You can't tell really anything about his conditioning from an update like this. But it is an update nonetheless. And I still think it's newsworthy because like I said, it is Rami. And we haven't really seen much of Rami lately. So it was cool to see this live stream um, with him and Phil. I thought they had a really interesting discussion. I honest, I honestly think that Rami's English has gotten significantly better. So I was impressed by that as well. Um, then combine that with this physique update from Dennis James. You got an interesting uh, Rami story in today's video. So shout out to Big Rami. Now, next up in the news, in men's physique news, a lot of people were disappointed to see this announcement from Sadiq Hodzovic. He made his big comeback this year, and he qualified for the Olympia in men's physique. He's competed in both the classic and men's physique Olympias, but he made his big comeback to men's physique this year. A lot of his fans were really excited to see that, but he just announced recently on his Instagram that he will not be returning to the Olympia stage this year, and he does not go into detail as to why that is. Some people are speculating that it might be a health issue, it might be family-related, uh, but here is what Sadiq actually had to say. He said, I know many of you were excited to see me back at this year's Olympia. Unfortunately, I will not be competing. I want to wish all the athletes the best of luck on this final stretch. Big shout out to my team, Cash Goudry, and then he goes on to name a bunch of other people, and the Olympia for putting on an incredible show. Bev's Gym and the entire IFBB Pro League for everything. And then he says, as Arnold says, I'll be back. So maybe we'll see him on the Olympia stage again. Maybe we won't, but I am a little disappointed to not see Sadiq compete this year because he was one of the only guys that I actually knew of in the men's physique lineup. I don't really watch a whole lot of men's physique. I only follow a couple of the guys, and Sadiq was one of those guys that I followed. So I am a little disappointed to see that announcement, uh, but I still wish him the best. 
Now, next up in the news, if you guys are not inundated already with enough classic physique updates, we got yet another physique update from Terrence Ruffin today at under two weeks out from the Olympia. Now we're getting close to a week and a half out, so we're really getting into that kind of uh, peak week spot. Uh, but Terrence posted this update, and it almost kind of feels like these guys are toying with Chris Bumstead a little bit because Chris really hasn't been posting much, and these guys have been posting, it seems, more and more by the week. It seems like daily updates from Terrence, daily updates from Urs, and still kind of cryptic updates from Chris, like black and white pictures, not really any videos, maybe a training video here and there in a, in a tank top. And it almost feels like these guys that are really gunning for Chris are kind of toying with him and saying, look, we're coming for you, especially Urz. I think Urz has been um, the most improved. Terrence didn't really need to improve much because he's already very complete. So there's nothing, you know, when you look at opposing opposing update from Terrence, what are you really looking for? You're looking for his conditioning mainly. What do you really want to see Terrence improve? He's really pretty balanced. He's already pretty well filled out. His posing is immaculate. What do you really want to see him improve upon besides coming in maybe a little bit tighter? So Terrence, we already kind of know what to expect from him. Urz, I think the updates were so shocking because he looks so so much markedly better than he looked in the past from a conditioning standpoint. And he also looks so much markedly better than a lot of the other guys in Classic from that conditioning standpoint. And that's what's making Urz stand out. And Terrence in this update, I, I think, is still a standout because we know what to expect from him. And it looks like we're getting more of the same class act from Terrence. Um, but again, it feels a little bit like they're toying with Chris Bumstead. I would really like to be a, like a fly on the wall um, to hear what Chris thinks when he's scrolling through Instagram, seeing these updates. Is he nervous? I mean, is he impressed? What do you, what do you think he's what do you think's going through his mind as he's seeing these guys constantly post these updates? Now, next up in the news, Aaron Singerman, the CEO of Redcon One. As you guys know, a couple days ago, he was officially released from prison. He has now posted his first post back um, on social media, sitting with his family. And he says in the caption there, the prison experience wasn't fun and some of it was torture, but I can say it made me a better person, a better leader, a better father, a better partner. I learned humility at a level I wouldn't wish on anybody, but maybe I needed it. I learned to appreciate all the things I had by having nothing. I learned what mattered most, my children, by not being able to be with them. Time is finite, my friends. Use it wisely. I know I'm going to squeeze the juice out of every moment. Don't miss what's what's going by, never to return because you're too busy looking at your phone. So happy to say I'm back, and this time I'll do it all better. So it looks like he's back, and he posted another post um, back in his office at Redcon 1. So it looks like he will be back at the helm. I don't know to what extent he's going to be fully back. I actually haven't talked to him yet, but it's good to see. It's always good to see a father reunited with their family. It's just kind of a feel good post um, from Aaron Singerman. And the final story that I have for you guys today, if we're talking about conditioning and classic physique, it would be unfair not to mention Wesley Vissers. Wesley has been looking more conditioned than ever. Um, and, and a lot of the latest updates that he's posted at under two weeks out, he looks really impressive. And I'm really curious to see what happens with Wesley because in the past, I kind of got the impression that the judges just didn't like his physique or didn't like his structure because we've seen him come in, you know, admittedly, some of the shows that he did, he came in off, and I think that was what you could attribute his placing to, um, but we saw some shows where he was really on and really conditioned and still didn't do that well, so I'm kind of curious to see how this translates on the Olympia stage. To me, he looks as good as he's ever looked, maybe better than he's ever looked, and I think, um, to me, he's one of my favorite guys in classic physique. But I just don't know yet if the judges see it that way and if they're going to see it that way. So I'm curious, you know, what they're going to do with Wesley here, if he's going to end up in one of the better call outs or towards the bottom. But either way, he's a guy that I'm rooting for. And as a fan, he's one of the guys that I want to see do really well. So that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did enjoy uh, both videos today. If you are enjoying the double videos, make sure you watch them, make sure you like them, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for all the Olympia coverage coming in the next week and a half. You don't want to miss any of it, so click that bell notification icon. And as always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.